so today, uh, in this conference, I'm going to talk a bit about robotics and AI and, um, and how we can make it simple so that anyone can get started. Um, we, we're not going to go too much in-depth into the technology. I'm, I'm, uh, if you want to talk more about technology, I'm, I'm here in the conference, so just go up and talk to me and we can talk about this about hours. I can, um, I'll take the time you need. But yeah, um, hopefully, I hope that this conference gives you uh, inspiration to start doing robotics and AI. I think it's a very interesting field. Um, I'm Adrian Xavier Tao. I'm a Frenchman uh, who's, uh, who's working in French and English and Chinese, uh, both in France and in China uh, mainly. And uh, I'm building a company that to help people get started with AI and robotics, basically. And to do that, I have a product called Dora. And, uh, and today, my main client is uh, mostly Huawei and uh, Hugging Face, which is the uh, the cloud startup about AI, right? All right. Um, so to get started, uh, let's. Oops, sorry. Uh, maybe I can just give you a quick overlook of uh, what robotics has been doing uh, those late, so this last year and those late couple of years. So basically, what we're able to do now with AI model is to really do really good job on imitation learning. So for example, if you if, if you give a lot of data to a robot, he will be able to to learn how to do the movement and reproduce them on any mo on any object, right? Uh, and um, and so for for this case, it's done. It's a job done by Stanford on very expensive robotic. But uh, but we there's also sh papers about robotics that is aiming to show that we can also do the same stuff with cheaper robots, right? So for example, in this case, uh, it's also a paper from Stanford, but they are able to do. Um, imitation learning with a model called ACT with very cheap hardware. So this one cost only $30,000, uh, which is cheap, uh, everything considered in the robotic field. But we can get even lower, right? Uh, if you take the cost of every seven motors, it might even just be about a thousand K. So for example, today I have a, I have a robotic arm that only costs about $2,000, and we can even get it to $1,000 with volume and uh, optimization. And so, so the thing is, and so basically what we're able to achieve is to do imitation learning uh, with really cheap hardware that could be applied anywhere, right? And so, so let me maybe give you more detail about what we've been doing at Dora and, uh, and how, we can, how anyone can apply this uh, at their place. So the thing is, in the past, when we were talking about robotics, it used to be very complicated. Uh, for example, I come from the field of autonomous driving. And so if you want to build an autonomous driving, in the past what you would do is try to imagine every scenario, every object that could be in the road, traffic light, signs, people, and you will create some form of abstraction around it and, and create to create a behavior around it. So, okay, if there's a person, maybe I should brake, maybe I should turn left or whatnot. And, and, but the thing is, it was really complicated, right? And so if you wanted to do this, uh, you might need a whole team of people to do this. Uh, but now, if you do imitation learning, what you can do is just record a lot of data uh, and then give it to a black box model uh, that is going to be, be based on transformers, and then it's going to be able to generate paths and generate actions that you can di directly use, and it'll be able to, to have the concept of traffic sign, has the concept of uh, traffic lights, and, and, uh, and all that, right? And so basically, it's, it, it's a lot easier. And so you don't have all those pipelining and abstraction. And the thing is that, uh, so this is, for example, this is one example of uh, a project called AutoWare. Uh, it's very successful in the autonomous driving, but it's very complicated. And if you wanted to get start this at home on the weekend, uh, you must be very productive, otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna take too much time, right? Um, uh, uh, but, but now you can basically replace all this with just one block of uh, an AI model doing imitation learning with transformers, just as you might do one with one LLM or one VLM or, or one like image gener generating model, right? Okay. And so, so with this paradigm shift, uh, we see that we can replace some of the old legacy software that used to be complicated, right? Uh, used to be complicated to get started with robotics. Uh, for those who tried, you probably had a lot of Linux issues and a lot of computer issues. And so, so, so this is, uh, this is part of the legacy software. It was hard to maintain and it was very slow as well, right? So every time you have an abstraction layer, you will probably need to have some form of way to serialize and deserialize the data so that you can understand what you're talking about. So if, let's say, you're trying to build an autonomous driving vehicle, 
you might have an abstraction around traffic light, and this might be uh, this might add a lot of latency. This might add a lot of overhead, right? And so we want to remove this. Uh, okay, um, and so we built something called Dora. Uh, so Dora generally aim at doing this, being this very friendly, open source, uh, really easy to get started, uh, really easy to install. Uh, software where there's very little abstraction because at the end what we want to do is to use an, an AI model uh, to be able to do imitation learning and so we, we don't really care about abstraction layers uh, kind of compared to the past and the idea is that to we can get anyone involved uh, but also get people who do research and, and make it very easy to accelerate the research and put uh, the latest state-of-the-art models into anyone's hand kind of like you could do with an LLM with ChatGPT and so on. And so, yeah, so we built Dora. Uh, maybe I can, can try to give you a quick demo. So if you want to, um, all right, can I do this? I'm gonna try to do this, yes. All right, so if, uh, Dora basically, it's uh, the, the main logic of Dora sits in a YAML file, kind of like Kubernetes. And so basically you will say, okay, I need a microphone. I need a uh, distill whisper, which is kind of a model to do speech to text, and then you can just, like this is kind of templating, and uh, basically you can just say, okay, I need all those nodes, and those nodes is going to be able to send input and outputs to each other, and then you can create a, a robotic application out of it. And the thing is, if you install Dora, uh, which is just a curl call, so I have Dora install, what, uh, it's, it's the thing is, every robotic framework, er, uh, sorry, every robotic Hardware has drivers that you need to install, and we know that this is always painful for people who don't know anything about computers and things. And the idea is, like, if you want to get started with Dora, you can just call Dora Build, and it is going to, sorry, uh, Dora Build, and it's going to be able to just install all the different dependencies. And so you don't need to learn all the Linux uh, command that you probably need to have in the past, and then it's going to install everything that you need to be able to. Uh, work with your robot, right? So in this case, it's installing microphone drivers, it's going to install the Whisper speech-to-text model and, do, and so on. And then if I want to, to start using it on my robotic arm, all I have to do is just to call draw start, and then it's going to start the model, and then I will be able to directly work with my like robotic arm that I'm having here. And so if I do, I'm just going to put the sound of my microphone on. Okay. So if I start to say up, it's going to go up. So I have a, have a speech text model that is going to be able to convert my up command uh, into, uh, so it's the interpolation that you see here, into the, the like, going up right in, in robotic language, right? If I say left, left, it's going to go left. If I say down, um, right, forward, backward, right, and I can even do, so if you, if you did like physics before, uh, you know that you have this Cartesian space with x, y, z, right, so we did x, y, z, but you can also do uh, rotation, so if I say turning left, turning right, turning up, turning down, turning forward, turning backward, so I can also do the rotation, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm working on this thing to, so that you can just voice control the robot, right? And uh, let's say you don't have arm for some reason, uh, because you broke your arm or something. Well, hopefully, uh, we can make this into something that anyone can use uh, when they have like, some form of disability, right? Uh, what I can also add uh, really easily with Dora is, for example, I can, I can do some like, slightly advanced features, which is saving position and going back to position. So for example, if I say uh, down, left, forward, uh, down, okay, close, all right, uh, saving milk. So I'm just maybe going to do this and this. So you, you see what I'm going to talk. So if I say saving milk, I said saving milk, it's just a command to save the current position which is going to be attributed to the milk uh, keyword. So I, if I say up, up, forward, up, left, left, forward, forward, up, up, 
I let them here, and I feel them drink. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, saving head. Okay. Saving head. Saving head. Right. And then if I say go to meal, go to meal, go to meal. Right. It's gonna go back. And then when I when I want to drink again, I just say saving head. Oh, uh, there. Uh, go to head. And then I'm, I can drink again. Right. <laughs> Instead of doing all, everything over and over again, right? Because it might be very tiring. And, um, and so, so the thing is now, if we want to automate this, right? Which is part of AI, right? We don't want to do this every time. We probably want just to have like the robotic arm. And when we say, okay, give me the milk, and it brings the milk. So the, the hard part about this, it's not really to go from here to here, right? But the hard part is probably going to be to aim at my face, right? And to, let's say I can't move my head or I can't move my head too much, what I need is data about what he should do when he's really close to me, right? So if I'm here, uh, I say left, 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 okay. I'm here, maybe here I'm going to say left, right? And so then I can collect data about what a robot should do when he's really close to my face, right? Maybe, so this is like a bottle of drink, right? But maybe it's like food, and maybe he has to be a bit like having a certain angle, right? And so in this, in this thing, we, we're going to collect a lot of data about what the robot arm should do at the very edge, right? Uh, same thing for when he's collecting the food, right? And the thing is, if we collect this data, we'll be able to, to do robotic AI. So I'm, I'm going to explain why. Oh, sorry. Okay. Went a bit too far. So I'm going to go and just close it. And yeah. So let me show you how we're going to do this. So, so draw out the thing is, so this is all coded in Python, but you can also use C and C++. On the channel, huh? Yeah. Uh, Rust. Uh, so this is coded in Rust uh, as a backend, but the API is exposed in Python and C and C++. And the good thing is, it's using this little thing called Arrow, uh, which makes it possible to use zero copy interface between libraries. So if you use PyTorch, for example, you will have no cost in using PyTorch. If you're using OpenCV, same thing. And if you're using like there's a plenty of libraries that is uh, has a support for Arrow, make it making it a very uh, Performant um, uh, interface, memory format. All right, great. Uh, and, and the thing is, uh, we, we we tried some testing. Uh, if uh, if you've been robotic before, one of the key kind of standard currently is ROS, uh, and we've been able to prove that we can be up to seventy times faster than ROS uh, uh, by using shared memory, by using zero copy, by using uh, no serialization. And so, and the thing is that. Uh, as I was talking before, it's actually very important to be very fast because when you have an AI model, uh, it's going to take a lot of time and the more you have latency, the more you have variance between your actions. And so the thing is you want to have as little variance as possible. Um, all right, that's great. Uh, that's all fun. Uh, now the question is, can it generalize, right? The thing is like, we have a lot of robots nowadays in the world, but it's, it's mainly on very focused tasks. And the thing that we want to do is have very generalistic robots that can do a lot of things, a lot of he can give me milk, he can give me food, he can give me whatever I can imagine, right? And the thing is, we, we're working with hugging face nowadays, and we're trying to create this single interface between robots, oh, sorry, robots and AI models, so that you will be able to connect any model with any robot. And same thing, if we do this, we're gonna create a lot of data on different tasks, right? And so we'll, this is one specific model, but we could have another model completely different, and we're going to collect data on how to feed people as well. And so then we can have a huge data set, right? And kind of the people from OpenAI, they built something uh, called uh, ChatGPT because they had a huge data set of data of people talking between each other and like the web. Uh, we want to do the same thing, but for robot, right? <laughs> so in this case, we will have an image and then the action that he has to do, right? Okay, great. Uh, low robot is from Hugging Face. Uh, it's built by someone called Remy Caden, mainly. Uh, it's someone who comes from Tesla, uh, uh, now works at Hugging Face, and he has been working on Optimus, uh, the robot that they're trying to do. And uh, so, low robot is a library, and, and hopefully, it, it should help you build tools to do data collection, uh, kind of like I'm doing right now. Training. Uh, so, if you want to. Once you have the data collected, how do you train a model? It's actually very simple to train an imitation learning model, uh, uh, model, and then to do inference. Okay, and then and then what you can do is just push 
the data set and the AR model on the hub of Hugging Face, and, and you will be able to share those models. Um, so, um, and so if you want to get started with Tora, uh, what you can do is teleoperate it, the robot, kind of I did right now, and then it's going to create a lot of data that you can just call a Python trip, and it's going to be able to train a model, and then you can just evaluate it with another data flow in, in the robot. Kind of the idea, right? Uh, I'm going very fast because it's kind of experimental at the moment, uh, so, uh, but uh, it's kind of the idea, right? Okay. Uh, so, for example, maybe it's, it's a bit confusing, uh, so I have a, a, a quick video of what it looks like to, to maybe explain a bit more uh, what I'm trying to explain. So, for example, here I have a humanoid robot, this is uh, me, um, and, um, and so yeah, so I'm going to show him, I'm going to try to do this movement, very simple, right? So, what I, I'm going to do is first, as I did before, just teleoperate the robot, in this case I'm using like the left hand to, to operate the right hand, and I'm just going to collect a lot of data, right, in every kind of scenario, so that he knows how to do a high five with me, right? So what I only have to do is it push the Python script and then say, okay, train a model from the data I just collected. And so it takes about one hour, one hour and a half. Uh, this is my Discord. And then, basically, I'm able to evaluate it, and then he's able to reproduce the, the movement, right? Now, as you can see, it's a bit shaky, and, and, and there's still a thing that is kind of, you would want to have like a, a stronger model to be like able to generalize on more circumstances if I go down, if I go up, and all those things. But the idea is that you only need more data to do this, and then it's going to work. Uh, now, the thing is, on this side, okay? All right, so if you want, we have like a, a longer demo. Uh, this is uh, with like probably everything that we can do. So for example, here, he's able to collect a cup so he's able to put it on a, on a cup holder, and then he's able to collect a, an apple, and then he's able to turn and give it to someone. Now, I, I'm going to just make a quick mention that in this case, in this demo, uh, so the robot has no notion of map, no notion of geolocalization. So it's kind of a paradigm shift between if you did robotics before, you would have a lot of code about like geolocalization and how do you make sure to have like a good accurate position and all of this, this the AI model is just able to, to generalize on this. And so it makes the code very simple. Now, so now we have challenges. Um, and the challenges we have is that we've noticed that uh, it's very sensitive to the training data. And, and sometimes if you train a model on a certain environment, it's not going to be able to, to generalize on a different environment. So if we take this same robot outside, it might not work, right? And in most cases, it's not going to work reliably. Um, and I think that's kind of something, uh, that's kind of why, if, you, if, you, if you've been on the, on the web recently, there's a lot of talk about humanoid robot, but it's often inside of houses or inside of an enclosed environment, because it's very hard to make it generalize on every environment. Um, it's also very hard to, to have certain, uh, certain multitasking models, and so what you will have to do is build a model for each scenario, uh, and so you can't like train a model, you can train a robot to do something, hoping to transfer the learning into something else. It's actually very hard. Uh, it's something that we've been doing. There's a lot of research, and maybe in some years we'll be able to do this, but currently it's very hard. And um, yeah, it's very also hard sometimes to go from one robot to another robot, right? Uh, it's something we want to do, but actually currently we still have issues. And, and, and the thing is, we, we, so considering those issues, um, we have been having trouble just using what we've been doing in lab, outside of the lab, right? And, um, and so, and so the, the thing is, so for example, in this case, I'm doing some Lego work uh, uh, with another robot, which is more for research. Uh, and the question that we've been having, me, Adroa, and others, is like, are we, are we not out of distribution? Are we not doing something that is not, like, reusable outside of, outside of, out, out, like in the real world, right? But the thing is, if we think about the real world, there's, there's a lot of challenges out there, right? There's a lot of things we want to do. Uh, so for example, um, there's a lot of people who actually need tooling, like I just show you, like both simple robotic arms to feed themselves, right? Uh, every day, there's, a, there's about 200, 300,000 people who's like completely disabled uh, from the neck uh, down. And, 
and they require people to have them, and those people, we might have them, right? And so maybe what we should do is, instead of working in labs, uh, we should probably think about how can we work outside of labs with people so that we can firstly help people collect data on real-world use cases that we can then reapply on the real-world use cases, right? And, and we've, if we think about this, it actually doesn't cost a lot of money. It actually doesn't cost a, 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 a lot of work because the people we're going to help is actually the people who's, who's, who need it the most, right? And uh, if we do this with just 100%, we might be able to create a data set that is bigger than, than whatever is available currently for research on robotic today, right? Uh, today, it's the biggest data set on robotics. It's about maybe 120 gigabytes, which is actually very small, right? If you consider like other things like traditional so kind of data set, right? Um, so, yeah, so, so, so that's what something uh, at Dora we, we're thinking about working on. And so, if you, um, yeah, if you, if you, if you, if that's something that that matters to you, feel free to reach out. And uh, yeah, another problem that we're thinking about doing is. Uh, can we can we solve trash, right? Um, so, for example, uh, in Paris, I, I come from Paris. Uh, there's a lot of people just like taking trash out of the street and then putting it in the back, right? And this thing, this thing, we can just automate it with a robotic arm, right? Uh, uh, it costs a lot of labor to do this. Like the, the mayor of Paris spent billions of euros on this every year. Uh, it's really hard to maintain, and so you might be able to. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, so so I'm so sorry. Um, you might be able to do this like for the Olympics, but then it gets back and then you have a lot of trash and so it's not a, a systemic solution. So, um, but the thing is like if, if what I showed you convinced you that we, we, we might have someone who says, okay, pick up this trash here and then he's just going to be, we can, we can have teleoperated, uh, teleoperated trash removal and then uh, and then, and then, in the first part, manually teleoperated, and then we'll be able to generalize, such as I've shown you, uh, and then we can solve trash, and then we can just literally build Wally -E out of this, right? And so we can put two arms into uh, like a robotic platform, and just, he's going to just be able to pick up trash. So, yeah, and um, okay, and so, so yeah, so how how are we going to do this? So this is currently our plan. And um, we, we, we think that we need to really think through uh, what is going to be the most effective way to pick up trash and help people that is disabled. Uh, we're going to do a hackathon in October with uh, top universities from China, hopefully from Europe as well. Uh, we're going we're gonna to try to design the best teleoperation work that we can do. And then hopefully we can deploy it in the real world, collect some data, maybe do some iteration on it. And then hopefully we can we can do a model and then release it and then create a cycle of a virtual cycle of people releasing an AI model on real world problem uh, with a uh, open source data set and then anyone will be able to basically download the model put it on his robot and then have it clean his house or the street or the community that he wants to to help or help the person he wants to help feed and things like this. So that's that's all that's all goal and. Um, uh, and yeah, so maybe just conclusion. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of progress in robotics, uh, but it's still very hard. So we built Dora to make it very simple. Uh, we have validated proof of concept that we can actually learn things from imitation learning. And now we want to do it outside of the lab just to, to have real people. And, uh, and yeah, if you, if you have, if that talk in, inspired you, feel free to reach out and, I, and, uh, and let's connect and let's see how we can do this together. So that's it for me. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, we, we, we can ask a question now if you want. We can have a small FAQ question. I don't know if you guys have questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, for, the, for the creation of data sets, yes. oh, thank you. for the creation of data sets, uh, do you have any, do you, do you foresee any concerns around privacy or other issues that may make it hard to distribute that data set yeah, yeah for, for sure we we hope that uh, that to so I, actually I didn't really think too much about this question but hopefully people are willing to share the data so if so if we feed people there's going to be their faces and things like this so so hopefully the people should be willing and never like not willingly um, do this but uh, but there's there's been a lot of work especially at hugging face so I'm working with hugging face people at how to make data anonymous and so there's, there's ways to do this and, and make sure that uh, people's privacy is, uh, is kept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I was just wondering, is the dynamics, at what level of the, is the AI controlling the dynamics of the robot? So, so when you say dynamics, is it drawing movement or what do you... Yeah, yeah. Are, are the dynamics still uh, traditionally programmed or is the AI basically running so, so the full dynamic controls? Mm -hmm. So basically now currently we're doing position control. And so basically you, you're able to tell, okay, the, role, so, so the AI is going to send some position that he's seen in the past and then going to like kind of interpolate on those past position, right? And so there's not really a, an idea of dynamics, right? So, so basically what he knows is just X, Y, Z position, right? Uh, he's not going to think about, okay, velocity or acceleration or something like this. But, but, but there's basically the idea is that uh, in the future, the idea is that you can you can feed as many input data and output data as you want, and and then the model is going to be able to do emission learning on this, right? Uh, kind of what you would be able to do on a car or something like this. So so there's definitely ways that you can generalize, like you can make train a model on more than just position and also dynamics as well. Yeah. So uh, the left and right keywords you use, so that's being interpreted as AI uh, to a position. Left and right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's just X, Y, Z position for him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Xavier. Actually, I'm your follower on Twitter. Okay. So, and, and uh, currently, I'm also building a startup uh, to create an embedded database. You can think it that uh, is that just like a SQLite, but with natively, natively support Apache Arrow. And okay. also, you I, I found I noticed that you use Apache Arrow to uh, uh, grab some benefits such as like a zero copy. And uh, so, my question is: Will you uh, will you be exploring further of uh, of Arrow based such as other analytic uh, tools, data tools? And uh, uh, what are your thoughts about how can uh, how an open source data analysis uh, ecosystem could support the development of robotics? Because there are, I think there are such a uh, lot of any pro uh, other protocols like fat, fat buffers, uh, campaign proto. They uh, they can also uh, uh, grab the benefits such as. Uh, zero copy. So why you choose Apache Arrow? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good question. Um, I think the the one of the good thing about Apache Arrow is also the. I mean, one of the things that inspired me at least uh, to use Apache Arrow is also the support for more than CPU GPU workload. Uh, and so in the C plus plus library, you can do basically you can do GPU zero copy uh, messages. So basically, if you have two AI models, what you will be able is to just send like. Uh, a GPU pointers from from if you use Nvidia card right uh, from one AI models to another and then they're going to be able to communicate between the two like this right and the good thing is that then you don't have the GPU to CPU copy which is still a bit expensive and um, and and so I think this is one thing that you can do with Arrow that you would not be able to do with with all, like flat buffer as you mentioned uh, Cap and Proto is going to be it's going to be very hard. And so I think more and more, and but then this is going to be more and more crucial as we see that we're going to getting more and more end-to-end -end models uh, out. And and then what you could do is also think about how maybe we will have in the future we might have like agents like multiple AI models running on the same on the same robotic computer, and then they might be able to communicate between them. Oh, I want to turn left. And there's another one to say, oh no, I want to turn right for whatever reason, right? And then if you want to make this efficient, you probably need some form of GPU memory communication, right? And so I think this is one of the big promise of Apache Arrow, uh, but uh, but as you know, it's like community based and and like it might take a bit of years before we really have like a strong support for GPUs, especially if you have if you have multiple GPUs vendors, right? But uh, yeah, that's that's really what I'm looking forward. Um, uh, I think this uh, the day, I think the the idea of having the, so basically Apache Arrow for people who don't know the main the main idea is just to say that if you have an array of data. We're just gonna represent it in all the same way, right? So if you have like 10 U8, but well, you're gonna say, okay, we have 10 U8. Uh, the first uh, byte is gonna be about the length. The first byte is gonna be about like the shape and then uh, the stride, and then it's gonna be all represented the same way so that every library can use the same 
memory format. And if everyone has the same memory format, you don't have to copy the data around, right? You can just use the same, use the same pointers, right? And so yeah, so I think GPU is definitely one of the things I'm looking forward at, at Apache Arrow, yeah. Thank you. So first of all, thank you uh, for your demo, for your talk. It's quite, <laughs> quite interesting. So my question would be, so if I understand correctly, the direction that you're suggesting is to basically go for shared learning, isn't it? Shared what, sorry? Shared learning. So basically learning. the model yep. learns uh, one specific task and then it was able to learn the other task by imitation, or basically kind of a... Sh so is it incorporating the training from multiple sources or from uh, multiple, let's say, location and people. Yeah. If that's the case, sorry. So, <laughs> How do you ensure the, the, the tra training data quality? Because if it's trained by several teams, right, the, the quality maybe differ and it completely, if there is no control, how do you make sure? Yeah, absolutely. And there is, uh, actually there's a lot of data that is actually uh, bad quality in robotics. And so uh, it's actually a real problem. Uh, so currently what we do at Hugging Face and Draw is mainly about like, we, we build our own data set and we train on our own data set, right? And then uh, this is how we get results about imitation learning. But we really think that the future, uh, especially if you look at, if you do a parallel between robotics and LLMs, you know that LLMs, you need a huge amount of data before you, you, you're able to have good results, right? And so we will need to have this shared as you said, shared learning, shared data set version. Uh, so one of the way to get good quality data set is what you can do is use a VLM to annotate data sets, basically. So you use, um, I don't know, so there's an in-house model called edfx 2 which is a VLM model. So what you're gonna say is that, oh, is this data good quality or does it make sense? Or should I just remove this data set, right? And so this is kind of one way to, to have quality insurance in kind of like vague big data set, right, yeah. So this is one of the approach we're gonna think, knowing that if you do VLM, you can also have like embeddings of the image and the text, and then you can also do some uh, vector analysis, for example, on those data, right, yeah. All right, thank you. All right, well, thank you very much and uh, for listening to my talk, and yeah.